Welcome back to Think Tech. I'm Jay Fidel. Today on Global Connections, we're going to take a look at the, the train the train disaster in India. And uh, we're going to talk to uh, Rupmati Kandakar, who has been following it, and she can tell us the latest. Rupmati, welcome to the show. Thanks for coming on to discuss this uh, very tragic accident in eastern India. Um, it, it, it probably has disturbed and disrupted the whole country. Am I right? Hello, Ajay, and it's always been uh, lovely to be with you. And today we are discussing one of the worst railway disasters in India. So this happened uh, a couple of days back, and it shook the entire country as it should. And it was a gruesome accident as we see it. And um, we'll just preview uh, what we can, you know, talk about the entire system and how it's one of the biggest, biggest uh, uh, railway disasters because of the passengers involved, because of the death toll involved, it's around 238 official and 900 injured. So we go to discuss one of the biggest railway disasters of the century. Yeah. Well, tell us what happened. You've taken a look at it. And so you know the, the way these three trains came together at high speed. How, how did that happen? So now we uh, see uh, in the this that uh, the Howrah Express was uh, there were two trains which were interlocking and coming uh, close to each other, and uh, the Balasore Express got a signal. They got a signal to go the interlocking system that there is. They got a system to divert, and when they diverted, Jay, uh, we can see uh, um, in the clip that uh, it went to the iron ore train the iron ore train, which was standing uh, still, stationary train, but iron ore train. So the center of gravity, the stability that this train has is enormous, Jay. So when a passenger train at full speed, when it collided with the iron ore train, the engine climbed up and the three passenger boogies behind it started disrupted. And the other train, which was passing by the Howrah Express, the tail end of that uh, collided with this disaster, and then there was a collision. Otherwise, that train was passing. Now, this interlocking uh, um, signal that the train was given to divert, who gave this, why it was given? It was a human error, and it was identified to be a person who did it. And now, uh, a Central Bureau of Investigation, CBI in India, has ordered a probe into this. So it's pretty serious business, Jay. It was not an accident. It was a um, disaster linked to human error, intentional or not, that is going to be investigated. Oh, boy. Yeah, I saw, I saw photographs um, of the, um, the passenger trains, and they folded up like, a, like an accordion. I mean, it was one car squashed against the other car uh, in, a, in, a, in a crush of metal, uh, and people who were caught in those cars had no way to get out. Yeah, if we see the clip, and uh, we uh, we now uh, understand uh, that how the trains came. Uh, Jay, let's have a look at that. So, yeah, let's see the clips now. What is this, Rumani? Jay, the Howrah Express was traveling uh, towards one direction, and the Abalasur Express was traveling to another direction. And see the interlocking error that it gets. It gets a chance to divert where the iron ore train is standing stagnant in another uh, place. And that's when it just climbs onto it. And now there is a total disaster because the tail end of the Howrah Express, which is passing by, collides into this accident prone site. So we have passenger boogies which have uh, collided with each other. So one train out of these three was stationary. But the train, unfortunately, was of iron ore. If it had moved or it had taken cushion the impact, the impact would have been a little less as compared to it just standing like a dead wall and <clears throat> this train banging onto it. So um, that was what caused uh, the impact. And the impact of this uh, train uh, collision was such that there were, uh, you couldn't avoid it. Two trains at high speed. Now, uh, Jay, there is an um, automatic train protection, ATP, that is being developed in India indigenously. And it is by the Research Standards 
uh, organization RDSO in India, and the trials are being held in South India. This is now this accident happened in West India, West Bengal things, and uh, the trials that are happening for the Kavach system. Now this is an indigenous, indigenously developed system, and it's a train breaking system, anti collision system, Kavach, but it's come a little bit too late, isn't it? Uh, oh yeah! Wow. It is oh. a developed one fourth the cost that the it's in the worldwide uh, market. One fourth the cost. But uh, the government says that anyway, this covered system would have not come onto this route because it's not a high uh, traffic route. So it would have been the fourth tier implementation of that system into this route. So this was a disaster impending to happen. Well, I, I saw that the trains, uh, the two passenger trains were traveling at 80 miles an hour. That's very fast. Very it's, fast. It's not the, uh, you know, the French uh, TVC, TG, what is it? The French TGV. 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 Uh, it's yeah, the yeah. train de grande vitesse in France yeah. or, or the bullet train in Japan. And I think the Chinese have a very fast train also. But it's still at 80 miles an hour. That's pretty, that's pretty fast. Yeah, so we do have one, one route coming up in Ahmedabad. Huh. You've seen those uh, trains in the uh, colonial uh, countries, which used to have those metal bars and everything. We were running on that. There was no new track added. There were no routes added. There were, he is trying to overhaul the entire system uh, with uh, uh, train system dependent on uh, green energy. Like we saw in the COP26 that he was the only one who promised that by 2070, we will go all green. And uh, as coal uh, is used by railways, railways is one of the biggest corporation of India and it uses around 40% of thermal energy. So uh, reforming the railways was a good route to go the green way. And uh, getting new trains known as Vande Bharat, uh, they are the fast trains. And uh, fortunately, unfortunately, none of those trains were involved in these. These were the old ones which were running in. So these are not the high tech or high speed ones which have come in. Still, they were at a good pace, but none of the new trains that were coming. No, I read that... Um... That that Modi has spent um, thirty billion dollars in the past year to upgrade mm -hmm. the rail infrastructure. What's what's the background of that? I mean, I, I I'm taking a guess here, but uh, just um, my observation is that trains are very important as a method of transportation in India. Uh, people don't necessarily have cars; they take trains. They they've taken trains. Uh, since the early days of the British Empire, uh, and uh, they still do take trains. And, and what happened right. here is it has to have a, a huge effect on the whole, the whole system. $30 billion, that's a lot to spend in one fiscal year. Yes. Jay, uh, India is huge, and so is the train system, because it links uh, almost every village, almost every route in India to each other. And this system upgradation that he did, around $30 billion, you know why the amount? Because uh, this amount was never spent on railways like this for an upgradation like that. The trains which were already there, they were either repaired or, uh, you know, just a uh, um, little bit of renovation, but nothing like this. This is pure upgradation where you have new trains being added, new uh, routes being added, and... Uh, AJ, in India, airfare and railway travel, they're approximately the same cost, but people still prefer railway because it takes them right to their doorstep. We don't have airports in every village, but we do have railway stations in every village. So that's why the railway system has got a higher linking road uh, role than uh, airport, uh, air flights. So that's, that's the main reason why he's upgraded this railway system. Well, it sounds like one of his big um, priorities is, is infrastructure. Um, yes. If you want to bring India, you know, uh, into the top tier of economic powers in the world, you've got to do that. 
And I recall, um, I think we talked about a bridge, a remarkable bridge that he built. Uh, I, I guess that was in also in Punjab. Um, that was uh, that cost a lot of money, but it was it covered a, a a river way down below, and it was very expensive, very high tech bridge. So it sounds to me like he's doing this for all modes of transportation, because he realizes right. that you have a you have a better economy and and more government control if you can uh, you know improve the transportation system in, in general and rail is is a very important part of that for india and for him um and so you know this is this has got to be um important for his his political image isn't it i mean since the government owns the railways then yes. um the the first inclination is to blame the government for something how has that worked out? What's the political mm. pushback on this? Uh, Jay, like we see after the World War, uh, infrastructure was developed to give employment to people. So infrastructure for country is always the best avenue to provide employment, create demand, put money in the hands of the people, and then demand supply, that uh, cycle goes on. So uh, Modi, by doing the infrastructure bit, is doing the right thing. And these bridges that connected uh, remote areas of India to uh, to us and, you know, supplies towards those places also was important of logistics, of military, of guarding the uh, security borders, of everything. So, uh, Jay, this uh, backlash for this accident did not reach Modi in such a way that nobody has blamed Mr. Modi. Uh, after this accident, Jay, if it was a, in the previous tenure of the Congress, the minister, the railway minister would resign, would say, it's my responsibility and I resign. If you have uh, access to this, I will show it to you. Um, there's uh, Ashwin uh, Vaishnav, who's the railway minister of uh, Mr. Modi. He, uh, he, uh, I mean, uh, Jay, he has been on uh, track for four days straight waiting for the trains to run back on track. It has just, he has just concentrated wholeheartedly and which uh, to get the tracks running back because you see how many coaches had collided with each other. Around seven coaches had collided with each other and there were dead bodies and um, the, the, the electrical lines had uh, uh, got cut. So it would have taken another government weeks to get back to the track. But this um, Ashwin Vaishna, he sat on the spot. He's not left it. And within two days, uh, Jay, he has got the track running back on. He's not disrupted anything else. So taking responsibility is just not by resigning. Taking responsibility is getting things back into action, getting the route back. So people are not blind. People have access to social media. People have access to every bit of news. And when they saw this kind of uh, responsibility undertaking and, uh, uh, you know, restoration of normal normality. And the well, prime minister was the first one to reach the site. You have to give him credit for that. Because this, this was in a, a, what, a rural area, the name of the town, what, uh, o Odisha? Odisha. Yes, Odisha is a state. And well, uh, Balasur is a place where it happened. Yeah, so that means that the the, the people who were necessar not necessarily on the train were not necessarily mm. from that area. They they may have yeah. just been passing through, and Correct. so uh, people had to come from distant places um, to yes. identify uh, the dead uh, and the government people who came to um, you know put the put the trains so you know fix the track and all that. They had to come Correct. from distant places too. So this Correct. has been an upheaval. Mm -hmm. And I imagine uh, the Indian press has covered, you know, the press around the world has covered this accident, this, this casualty. And it, it has been everywhere um, in every media for the past few days. Um, it, is a, it is a world reaction. How is the reaction in the media in India? I would imagine that it's even more so in India. Yes, this this uh, disaster was in the news headlines uh, on every bit uh, of uh, news uh, channel or resource uh, source that we can find. 
but nobody has reported a negative thing or you know you couldn't point fingers and say that your railway uh, is, um, upgradation was wrong because firstly the route is not high priority secondly the uh, it was a human error which caused the interlocking system signal the signal was given and then withdrawn so jay something is fishy over there and uh, thirdly the people responsible at the top took responsibility uh, in such a way that they sh they were on the ground so people have uh, appreciated that and people have seen that uh, they did not just let go and leave it to uh, the lower ranks to take care of business the highest the top priority everybody has come in and they have hands on um, uh, been able to get the track running because see if you suspend one track there are different trains different routes two days of uh, holding back of this would disconnect two states so uh, somebody coming up with this and um, jay if you see uh, they have to uh, do a lot of things because the uh, the tracks which are there they are not they cannot just be um, restored they need a lot of in interlinking uh, um, what is that uh, efforts you have to have the department of um, uh, what is that uh, trains which everything have to everything has to come together and yeah. that was done at the highest level and the prime minister himself came onto the site that was a sight to see because you, you never seen a prime minister just taking the entire uh, blueprint of the place telling what has to be done instructions passed going and meeting them in the hospital even these were not just photo opportunities because even if there was no photographers uh, involved he would have done it he is that kind of a person well, even as really, mr okay. let was this is he's done the right thing politically then this is mm. going to um make him even more popular no yes mm. no it won't dent his image uh, popular it won't increase his popularity but this never dented his image he mm. made sure that he did the right thing. that was mm. the and at the right time Mm. Jay, if he had a, um, a railway minister who would have just deserted uh, the scene, we would have had a very wrong impression. Because in the past, if you uh, pick up and you see, we have had railway disasters in India, and we have had railway ministers just uh, confining their responsibility to their resignation. Just that. Yeah. Nobody has made sure that it's back to uh, normals. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, uh, two, three hundred people died, um, and their families must be coming from all over India uh, to to deal with um, all the arrangements that have to be made, uh, mm. and including, as you mentioned, the hospital. If there are yes. nine hundred or more people who are injured, a lot of them are going to be in the hospital, and uh, I, I imagine that those hospitals would be in uh, Odisha also. So people yes. have got to be coming from far and wide to take care of their relatives, no? Community came in again uh, this time, Jay, like we discussed in the COVID time. There were many organizations, especially the RSS, uh, which is the Rashtra Seva Sang, and uh, many organizations who came on site and there were donations of blood within 12 hours of the system, so much that the blood bank had to turn back to people saying that we have had enough. There were so many people. So community, uh, uh, despite, uh, um, in spite and over above the government, also came in and helped uh, all these uh, people immediately. And uh, Jay, in these trains, uh, though people, we know the people who buy the tickets. We identify those. But those people who are just traveling without a ticket or just traveling to the route, they are also involved. So compensations were announced for the people dead, the people injured, and the people people. Uh, differentiation between gravely injured and just injured, and they were given pr promptly. So, gee, there's a lot of players involved, as you as you mentioned. There's the government, um, various um, departments in the government. Um, there's the people and their families, people who died and were injured. Um, there's the, the the healthcare system in that area to take mm -hmm. care of them. Um, and, um, of course there's a, you know, the, there's everybody in India is aware of this and the, there's the media, um, you know, and so everybody is aware. And my, my question to you is, 
what what has India learned? What have what have the people learned? The train system learned? Uh, what has the government learned, if anything? Um, mm. what, what have what have the family? What is what is the man on the street or the woman on the street learned? And and I guess I want to ask you also about the the, the reaction from outside of India, because this was. Mm. You know, this was a matter of news all over the world. And I imagine just as there was an outpouring of support in India from Indian eleemosynary organizations, um, there was probably an outpouring of support from India's neighbors and friends and other countries. Right. So uh, what 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 has that been like? And what have, if you can say, what what have these various you know elements of the catastrophe, what have they learned? Or what do you think they should have learned? Uh, Jay, um, the railway upgradation uh, system, the covered system, because this was a low priority route, uh, they would have to get into a faster upgradation of this covered system, which is an anti-collision device that is being developed by India. That should have uh, been now. There will be a fast track to that, isn't it? Plus. Uh, uh, like uh, Jay, the routes, routes on uh, Indian tracks, you cannot monitor, you cannot have security for them. There are, there's, there's a clip going viral of a small child placing rocks on the track, which is very dangerous. He's placing big rocks. So uh, how do you prevent such disasters? Um, there has to be a self-responsibility, moral responsibility. And um, Jay, if we see this, about Mr. Modi being criticized outside of the country. Uh, there are some things which are above, way above uh, your um, personal interest, and that is national interest, your collective responsibility towards your nation. When a nation is in a disaster, if they don't identify themselves as Indians and they get down to criticizing just for political means, there's something drastically wrong with them. There's a collective responsibility for a collective action that has to be taken. And that is each politician's responsibility because when they go outside of the country, they are representing India and poking on a disaster or poking on a, a, a thing which has uh, uh, to malign somebody's image for your own personal reasons is never right. In, in times of disaster, in times of calamity, everybody has to come together and rise above their political intentions. That has always been the norm, the resp uh, responsibility, uh, political responsibility that each person has. And if they get down to belittling uh, Modi or belittling BJP for this, uh, that is uh, their personal vested interest that they want to come to power the next time. But that uh, nobody's blind, everybody sees it, that they're, they're showing that they're petty in their mindset. and. Uh, Upgradation of uh, railways will never stop. India is going towards uh, this upgradation which is long needed, seven decades, and nothing has been done for upgrading the system, the passenger system. It's one of the largest uh, networks under one manager. So when the government manages it, upgradation will never stop. They will point fingers, they will uh, try to hurt, but their collective responsibility, their moral responsibility is towards national interest. Any any politician. Mm. You know, um, there was one suggestion I noticed there where they were talking about priorities. Um, that the I'm, I'm only uh, assuming here that the the thirty billion dollars went for new rail equipment. Um, mm. This this equipment involved in in this uh, this catastrophe was old rail equipment or not new anyway. And so um, the, the point was that uh, uh, perhaps the priority was on new rather than old, and old is uh, more dangerous, you know, than new. And I don't know, I, I don't know how that interplays with, um, you know, the the software and the and the anti-collision system you mentioned. But one thing seems to me is that going forward, uh, the government can and probably will spend more than $30 billion going forward. That it will, um, it will take more money, it will allocate more money to rebuild the older infrastructure, not only the trains 
uh, and you know the rail and and the security, as you said, where the child puts a rock on the track, that is really dangerous. Yeah. Uh, but to but to make sure there's a fence around the rail uh, so that that can't happen. Um, so I think I think what's going to happen, what should happen anyway, is you, you have to you have to put the priority on all elements of the system, the new ones and the not so new ones, um, and 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 put the um, the safety uh, technology, the safety devices on both the new ones and the old ones. I think there'll probably be a public call for that, and I think it's it's obvious that that you know that should happen. Um, and from this discussion, it seems to me that rail is uh, is part of India's DNA. Um, we mm. really can't afford to lose people on trains because that's the way they get around. That's what that's what binds India together. That's why this is such a catastrophe. That because it, it's at the heart, it's at the heart of yeah. India and yeah. its economy and its social connection. So uh, I imagine we're not going to hear the end of the story for a while, um, that there will be a lot of discussion about what needs to be done in terms of the money and the priorities going forward. Do you agree? Of course, of course, right. Uh, point on. Uh, the railways are at the heart of Indian uh, uh, economy and uh, Indian lifestyle. And uh, Jay, you remember during the COVID, uh, we had created green channels, which was transporting oxygen. So uh, it's a lifeline, uh, unpart, you know, uh, you can't really compare the goods uh, transportation, the people transportation, uh, the role that Indian Railways plays in uh, creating jobs. Uh, that is also a big thing. The employment uh, quotient of uh, Indian Railways is unparalleled. So we have uh, something which uh, will keep on progressing. And this is one, I hope, of... Uh, never uh, disasters. Well, I think if we look again in five years or 10, we will see uh, high-speed trains, uh, mm -hmm. better rail systems, better control systems, and and actually comfort, just like in uh, TGV in, in France and uh, and the high-speed uh, <laughs> high rail in, in Japan, and for that matter, China. <clears throat> and so uh, I want, you know, one myth I wanted to spell before we mm. conclude our discussion is that you know, people have seen um, photographs um, in, in the, of the popular culture around trains mm. in India, where there's a million people hanging off the train. You know, they're <laughs> stuffed. They're stuffed in the cars. They're they're hanging. They're holding on to the train as it goes forward. And um, I don't think it's like that at all. I, I think that India has has given that up a long time ago. And that uh, in either the <laughs> new ones or the old ones, if you if you take a train ride in India, it's comfortable, it's spacious, and it's uh, organized. Am I right about that? <laughs> a bit, a bit, a bit on that. Because uh, there are different classes of Indian railways. You do have the seated where you have your booking and done, your seat done, and you will claim your seat. But there are still many locals which which are inter intercity travel and uh, which um, some where just people climb onto it and they'll say we'll get down at the next stop. So a lot of, uh, uh, <laughs> what do you call them, hoarders? Hoarders are still on and the country still functions on those people hanging out and falling out. So that that continues, Jay. That doesn't, uh, that doesn't stop. <laughs> <laughs> well, do you think it might change? I mean, going forward, I... <laughs> I think people people may insist on change. In fact, they, are there people in India, people that you know, who are saying, "Hey, this is dangerous business." You know, I I don't want to take I don't want to take that risk anymore. I want to have these trains really comfortable and especially safe. Are people saying that? People use that. I I mean, normalizing a crowd in India is very easy, Jay. Two days into India, and you will feel it's normal to push into a crowd, to uh, get into a crowd. In Japan, you remember, they have those people who have professional pushers who push you into <laughs> <Right>. the train. <laughs> so we don't, uh, in India, the crowd itself acts as the pusher. So you have a crowd behind, which is the pusher of the crowd behind. So the crowd actually, if you just stand, they will take you in the train. <laughs> so we don't have professional crowd pushers, but the crowd itself is... Uh, 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 moment gives you momentum and the crowd 
you can't escape a crowd in india it is <laughs> everywhere it is anywhere even if you get down the train you will be in the same crowd so that way well 1.4 <laughs> billion people it's quite a crowd mm -hmm. But you know, I mean, one thing that strikes me, as, and this is my own experience, and my own experience with you talking with mm. you, is that I think people now, 2023, are more mm. conscious about India than they have been um, mm. about India's uh, economy, its uh, its success in technology uh, mm. and telecommunications, uh, the success of Indians who who come to other countries like the United States and how successful they are in so many ways in business. And, you know, uh, uh, India is like a very important player that we have to, you know, we have to pay attention to, we have to relate to, we have to have um, our global relations with them. And although this is a terrible, tragic accident, it does, it does make people more aware of what India is and what it's like and what its challenges and its politics are. And, and uh, although I, and I hate to see people, you know, killed and hurt, fact is this is going to be one of those events that make people around the world think more of India. Do you agree? Yes, it's, it's a learning point. It's a point where uh, got communities together got people together, got national interest together and global attention to this uh, event. But uh, we see that uh, India has to um, get this back on track because nothing can afford to stop the line of progress that they're making. This has to be a part and parcel of uh, uh, the route that India is taking. And uh, Jay, uh, the disaster, because it was, like I repeat, because it was human error, uh, we could not blame the system. And the aftermath of the restoration was such that you could not blame the administration. And the community feeling that people came together to uh, help, that showed that India has a resilient spirit. So when Turkey had an earthquake, India was the first to help. So when a country which is trying to, uh, it's an indigenous uh, effort is very important, Jay, because it's a colonized country. We have to not forget that. It's not been uh, at this level from the beginning. It has reached this level through hard work. So uh, irrespective of who's at the top, uh, this country has come from a colonized nation to being one of a developing nation towards a developed nation at 2070 it wants to be. So, and still going with uh, consideration and uh, consolidation of efforts towards, um, and, you know, the efforts are not harmful to others. It is within. Uh, it's the Hindu way of life that you have to look towards yourself, inner self, and uh, progress within yourself. So that kind of uh, philosophy is practiced on this national scale. So that uh, it deserves a bit of respect. <laughs> Well, it, there is a statement that people do come together, and yeah. that they are they are they are they are gathering together about this. They are expressing, you know, community, national community about yes. this, and that's pretty obvious in the world. So it's a it's a positive side of this whole story. Absolutely. Well, thank you, Rupmati. Thank you for helping us understand what happened and what the implications More. are. And I'm. And I'm so sorry for, you know, the people who, who were killed and, and injured. Um, but I think the world needs to understand what happened and what it means for India. Thank you, Rupati. Most welcome, Jay. It was always my pleasure. Aloha. <laughs>